moved to Bellevue in 1992, and he's right way, way before much of the skyline of Bellevue was constructed. We arrived here, our oldest son uh, was three, and he just turned 30 yesterday, and how Bellevue has changed. But God loves Bellevue so much that he has sent this church, City Hill Church, to be in one of the greatest cities, maybe America's greatest city, and but to have such a pastor, I mean, it's one thing to have a pastor, but a pastor that's not attractive, that's a challenge. You have an attractive pastors. They're very intelligent. You know what? I think they fit Bellevue, but most of all, they're anointed, they're graced, they're called. Can you give it up for your pastors? Unbelievable. Yuri, I love you. I so, so love you so much. And their team is unbelievable. If you do not have a church home, I want to encourage you. Uh, make this your church because their leadership is really second to none. I want to give a shout out to someone. We have, in my opinion, the, the best Bible college on the entire West Coast. Uh, we started an internship at Church Home, what used to be City Church, uh, 27 years ago, which Judah Smith uh, would go through. And uh, we started our Bible college in Ventura, California, about seven years ago. So I have trained over a thousand young leaders. Probably 96% of the staff at Church Home uh, went through our Bible college and I trained. And I have to say something. There's someone here today, out of all the thousand that I have trained, this young man would be in the top five to the top 10 leaders I have ever seen. He is one of the greatest, greatest biblical communicators. And you mark my word, he'll have one of the largest churches in our nation. Plus, he can flat out lead worship. And he led worship today. David, will you stand up? My God, look at this guy. Ladies, he's single, okay? Now, Jesus is the door, but I will be the screen door. You have to check with me, you know? And so he is un unbelievable, and his mom and dad are here. And I just want to personally thank you. You moved me that you would trust your boy with us in our college. And mom and dad, you have done such a great job. And David looks like his mom, hey? And so uh, can you give his parents a hand clap? Look at your neighbor say, you look really good in the cinema today. You know, today, uh, as a pastor, I've been a pastor now for over 33 years. And one of the number one questions we get asked is, how do I break a negative cycle? And today, I want to begin to share with you and communicate with you how to break a negative cycle. I want you to say this with me. Say, break it. A little bit louder now. Break it or be broken. And can I say we're either going to break a negative cycle or we will be broken. I want you to say this one. Say break it and replace it. And so today our goal is not only to break any negative cycle in our life, but we want to replace it with a positive, healthy, and even stronger cycle. And you say how do we break a negative cycle in our thoughts and in our life? You see, in our life, our life has patterns, rhythms, and cycles that are made up of healthy or unhealthy patterns. And uh, a negative cycle is one that is painful. Uh, thought patterns that produce habits, habits produce cycles that are healthy or unhealthy. And a cycle is just walking around in a circle. You say, what is a cycle? It's simply just walking around in a circle. And in Deuteronomy chapter 2, it's going to come up on the big Bible behind me. Verse 3, God says, you have circled this mountain long enough. And I believe the Spirit of God is upon us today, and he has graced us. If there's any negative cycle, you say, what is a cycle? It's just walking around in a circle Today, we're going to break that cycle, and we're not just going to live in forgiveness. We're going to begin to live in freedom. Can you say amen? And I really do believe this, that there are different negative cycles in our life. It could be gossip, unbelief, denial, pain, abuse, anger, 
dysfunction. Some people live in a circle of jealousy. Do I have any jealous people out there? I love you up there. She going, you know I am, you know. Do we have any people that have road rage, mall rage, whole food rage, northwest rage, traffic rage? Can I, can I get angry people? Come on, angry bird. Raise your hand right now. And it's just something about, I don't want to live in a circle. Now, young people, you are so fortunate. When you're driving, people have been driving us around. And uh, last night, the guy got up MapQuest, and we went from here to another uh, place, and it gave us directions. Can I say, before MapQuest, you said, Pastor Jude, do you have a good sense of direction? Absolutely not and and so my wife it was my map quest and she go baby uh do you know where i'm going to go woman i always know where i'm going and i'm driving the car a few minutes later baby do you know where i'm going becky i know where i'm going she said jude are you lost i go why do you think uh i'm lost she said because we've seen the same house five times you're driving in a circle do you know anyone who's driving in a circle you know someone their life is stuck and they keep going going around and around and you know how would they do this is the way we go to church go to church go to church this is the way we go to church every sunday morning i do not want to go to church and live in a negative cycle i want to go to church break a negative cycle and replace it with a healthy life-giving christ-centered cycle can you say amen now everyone just shout it out come on say break it replace it give me one more my gosh I feel like a personal trainer give me one more man I love Slavics and Russians you know why because they know how to work out amen you know Everyone, you got to know this, that a negative cycle, when we keep seeing the same negative patterns and habits over and over in our life, and we either break that cycle or it will break us. It is not God's will that we would be stuck in a negative cycle. And today, we're going to see how to break it, but also how to replace it. Can you say amen? And I want to replace a negative cycle with a positive cycle. Just So one more time, look at your neighbor say, break it. Make it sound like you're from the South, like Renton or something. Break it. I love the way people from Renton say Renton. Renton. You know, they forget the T. They don't even say Renton. They go Renton. You know, everyone say, break it or be broken. Now, I want you to know the, the number two ways to break a negative cycle. And, and today, as I come to you, uh, I'm 59. <laughs> That's funny. Someone goes, oh, <laughs> right back at you, you know. I'm 59. And you know what's something when you are 20? My oldest son yesterday turned 30. And uh, a few days ago, I called him, and his name is Jude. Like mine, I go, Jude, what's wrong? He goes, I don't know. He goes, I was thinking about it. I'm going to be 30, and I thought I would have conquered the world by now. And he's a youth pastor. He has a large youth ministry, and we started talking. He says, I'm not 20. You know what's something when you're 20 years old, and there's a lot of young professionals here, and you have a negative cycle. You know what a cycle is. You just walk in a circle. This is the way we go to church, go to church. And you have a negative cycle. Sometimes you're willing to live going in that same pattern over and over because you think you have your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. But when you become my age and you're 59 and you realize you're one year from 60 and you're going to be getting your AARP card that when I come to this cinema next year, I'm getting a discount. Come on. And you know I'm going to use my card. Hey, I'm a senior citizen. You don't look at it. I would, first time, I will be carded to prove my age. Is that not cool? And so I was like, hey, 60 years old. But you know what's weird? When you become 59 and you realize that in my 20s, I have been walking around the same circle in my 30s and my 40s. And I don't know about you. But I, I have a problem sometimes with intensity and anger. And, and I know they say, well, I thought you were a pastor. Be quiet. I am a human being. And I don't want to live in the forgiveness cycle. I want to break a negative cycle and replace it with something more powerful and more enduring. Can you say amen? Now, I know this. The two ways to break something in your life or my life or our life is, number one, we have to have a clear conscience. And number two, we should have a faith partner. I want you to put this scripture up. It's 1 John 1, 9, or 1 John 1, 8 and 9. 1 John 1, 8 and 9, it says, if we say 
We do not have a negative cycle. I am Russian. I have no negative cycle. Well, then the Bible says this. We deceive ourselves. Everyone in this room today, including myself, I'm going to answer the altar call today. We have a negative cycle. And you say, what is that? Well, you're just going in a circle over and over and over again. It says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But it says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from, from what? From what? A little bit louder. Did he say half of them? Did he say a few of them? Did he say only the ones before you accepted Christ? Did he say only the future ones? How many of you sinned yesterday? How many, how many of you are morning sinners? You actually sinned this morning. Oh, I love that. And this girl goes, you know I did. Come on. I mean, let's, let's say that those three words together from all unrighteousness, okay? On the count of three. One, two, three. From, okay, one more time. Okay, one guy goes, all unrighteousness. He sounded like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. I love that. One more time out loud from I'll never forget one day, it was years ago. I don't know if you've ever done this, but my sin may not be your sin, and my hang-up may not be your hang-up, but there is something in all our lives. Like I said, it could be jealousy, it could be abuse, it could be anger, it could be betrayal. For me, oftentimes, a leader has a temper usually, and the reason why, it's kind of what gives you the ump. It's the engine sometimes of leadership. And the Bible says that God gets angry, but he sins not. So anger in and of itself isn't a sin. But my anger became a sin. And I'll tell you why. You said, how did it become a sin? Because it became painful and destructive. And it kept me and those around me in a circle where we never could make progress. And so one day uh, I, I got really intense with my family. And I went uh, to uh, another room and I was just praying. And I don't know if you've ever said this when you're walking in a circle. I go, I hate my sin. Have you ever done that? And you kind of get emotional. I hate it. I hate my sin. You know, how many of you ever said that? I hate it. And you just start crying. And all of a sudden, I felt an impression. It came to my mind, my emotions, my heart, my spirit. And some people would say that God actually spoke. But we'll leave it in that holy nudge, that holy hunch. And God said, Jude, you don't hate it. He said, actually, you love it. He said, because you do not do anything you hate. He said, you're not tempted to lick an ashtray. Why would I? You know, he said, because you don't love licking ashtrays. You're only tempted by what you love. He said, why don't you ask me to give you a hatred for this thing in a new heart? And can I say this? The Bible says, if we confess our sins... And, and so I, I really misunderstood this scripture, 1 John 1, 9. I want to go back to verse 9 if we put it in the big Bible on the screen here. It says, if we confess our sins. Say that with me. Say it a little bit louder. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I used to think that my forgiveness was based on me confessing my sin. Now, I don't know about you. Have you ever confessed the same sin more than once? Have you ever confessed the same sin more than twice? I think that day I confessed that sin over a hundred times. Forgive me, God. <laughs> Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. And all of a sudden, the impression came to me. He said, I forgave you the first time you asked me. He says, in fact, I forgave you before you asked me. I forgave you 2,000 years ago when I hung on a cross and paid for every one of your sins. I forgave you. Thank you for that golf clap. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? And you know what else? And this is beginning to break the negative cycle in my life. He says, I not only want you to confess your sins. I looked up that word. And this go right here. It says, if we confess. Say that with me. All the women said. Oh, they got some attitude. If we confess. All the men said. Man, I love Russian dudes. If we confess. Come on. All everybody said. Now, you know what the if is? It's not just saying I sinned. The word confess in the Greek means to say the same thing that God says about our sin. 
So I don't know if you've ever had a battle in your mind, a courtroom, when you're in a negative cycle. Remember, a negative cycle, we're talking about how to break it. It's something that's painful. It's something that's destructive. It's going in a circle around and around. And I would say, I sinned, I sinned, I sinned, I sinned, I sinned. And all of a sudden, the impression came. God said, Jude, not only say your sin, why don't you say what I say about your sin? I want to ask you that question. What does God say about your wrongdoing? What does God say about your destructive habit? What does God say about your addiction? What does God say about it? And all of a sudden, in my mind, I saw that I was in a courtroom. And there was God the Father, the judge of all humanity. And the, deep, the prosecuting attorney, Satan, came in and said, Father, judge of all mankind, Jude got angry. And all of a sudden, I started agreeing with the devil. And you know what the Bible says, yeah, God, I got angry, I got angry. And you know what the Bible says, where two or more touch anything in agreement, it's going to be a reality. And I was just saying, I sinned, I sinned. That's not what that verse is talking about. There's more to confessing your sin. All of a sudden, in my mind, I saw there was an interruption in the courtroom. It was my defense attorney. And this defense attorney had nail scars in his hands. His name is Jesus Christ. And here I'm saying, I sinned. And all of a sudden, I heard what Jesus said about my sin. He said, yes, Father, Jude did get angry. But, Father, I want to remind you that 2,000 years ago, Go. I paid for that sin, and because I paid for that sin, Lord, he is innocent. He is not guilty. He is righteous, so I'm not only confessing what I did wrong. I am confessing what Jesus Christ did right and what he did for me, and I am righteous in Jesus. Can you give the Lord a shout and a hand clap? Come on. So never again can we just go and say, come on, is that where we're going to live? We're just going to live in the forgiveness cycle. What about the freedom cycle? I want to get out of forgiveness and move into freedom in Jesus' name. Can you say, yes, Lord? And, and so everyone say, clear conscience. Now, I want you to go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. I love this verse, and it's going to come up on the big Bible on the screen. Everyone say, break it or be broken. Say, break it or replace it. Now, listen to this. It says, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. I know I hear some of you saying he's loud. I'm trying to get you used to heaven. <laughs> OK, if you don't like loud, you're, you're not going to like heaven. Everyone thinks heaven's like, Shh, no, we're going to be party up in heaven. OK, it says now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused him before our God, listen to this, day and night. Wow, I'm telling you, there are times, day and night, the enemy comes, you got angry, you got angry, you got angry, you got angry, and all of a sudden go, I did get angry, I did get angry, I did get angry. But there has to be a point, and look, maybe it's not anger, maybe it's something that happened to you. You see, there are things this morning that you're going to have to break off your life, but there are other things in your life. You need someone to come and break that off of your life. And I'm saying, what does God say about your weakness, your, the area where you're vulnerable? Begin to say what he says, and he says that you are cleansed. Now, get this. It says, the accuser of the brethren who accused him before our God day and night has been cast down, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Uh, years ago, we were national hosts on TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network, and they had a guy by the name of Bob Larson. He would go to churches, and he would cast devils out of people, ooh, and, and he showed a video where the pastor's wife had a devil, and she kind of fell out and manifested. The pastor had a devil. The deacons had a devil, and I thought, dear God, I may have a devil, you know? I don't know, you know, Bob Larson, I mean, and all of a sudden, Pastor goes, Bleh, you know, and, and so you know what I did? I go, no way, I hear it. no way, I'm going to be manifesting on national television, and I kid you not, I said, the blood of Jesus Christ is over my mind, my life, my will, and I am righteous in Jesus' name. <laughs> Devil, shut up right now, and I know this sounds hokey, and you've heard other people on TV, podcasts, and YouTube say it, the next time the devil remind you of your past why don't you just go ahead have freedom and remind him of his future come on God's not remembering it why should you it is over let's break the cycle and move on into a new future can you say amen 
That is so good. Everyone say, I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Now, I want you to do this. Let's read this. Proverbs 28, 13. It says, he who covers his sin will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes. I want to say a lot of times when we do wrong, we want to try to cover it up. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I, I, no, you're not good. But the Bible says if you confess, then you'll prosper. Get this. It says confess and forsake. One day, uh, I was literally, I was going, God, I hate it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I found, again, the impression of the Spirit of God. I said, Jude, are you sorry enough to stop it? I said, no, I, I, I don't, I'm not that sorry. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you ever remember the story. They had a guy named Moses. He took the children of Israel, the Jewish people, out of Egypt. And they had these plagues. And one of the plagues, they had frogs come all over the land of Egypt. They had frogs in the bathroom, Ooh. frogs in the kitchen, frogs by the plasma TV, frogs in the, the bedroom, flog, frogs everywhere. And Moses, this guy who's like this communicating prophet, he tells the king, the Pharaoh, hey, I'm going to give you the honor. Name the time you want these frogs to be out of the entire land of Egypt. And you know what Pharaoh said? Tomorrow morning. That could be a new sermon, one more night with the frogs. And, and, and it's like, I, you know, it's like God saying, hey, when do you want to break this? Thing? I want it broken. I want, okay, tomorrow morning. Come on. I want to break it right now. I don't want to sleep one more night with this problem. Come on. I don't want to hold hands with the problem. I don't want to make out with the problem. I don't want to date the problem. I don't want to marry the problem. I want to break it and replace it. Can you say amen? amen. Can you give the Lord a shout on that one? So everyone say break, break, say replace. Now, another one, if you're going to break something, and I really do believe this, and we need a faith partner. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, woe to the one, and it's just going to come up. It says in Ecclesiastes, for if they fall, you're going to fall sometimes. But can I say if, like, for example, I'm getting on a plane today. If I trip on the plane and fall, I'm not going to fall to the ground. And that's why the Bible says when a righteous man falls, he gets up seven times. Jesus' gravity is picking me up. It says when one will lift his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Now, how many of you have ever heard of a health club? Okay, all two of you. <laughs> L.A. Fitness, 24-hour fitness, Orange Theory. Now, what's amazing, at the health club, if you get a sticking point in your bench press or squatting or an exercise, uh, you go and you ask for a spotter. Now, one type of spotter I really do not like when you go and they go, come up, come up. And, and you go down, to, ladies, you know how it is when you bench press. The men don't know. But you're going down, and the person just lifts it up for you. And it's like, whoa, I actually want it to work out. I don't need you to do the work for me. But then there's that perfect spotter who go, hey, bro. That's what guys call each other at the health club. Hey, bro. He goes, do you need a lift off? And they're going, yeah, yeah. And you know, you go, shh, shh, shh. you know, like that's going to help you, you know. And, and I kid you not, I call it the two-finger spot. And he goes down. And when you get to that sticking point, literally barely, and you make it. And when you throw it back up on the bench because that, you do that. And this is what the spotter says, it's all you, bro. It's all you, bro. And I go, yeah. Can I say it right now? Some of you need a spotter. You don't need the same chump you've been working out with for two years to go to another level. You need someone who is going to challenge you, someone who's going to correct you, someone who's going to take two fingers. Come on. We decided to break that cycle a week ago. We're not going around this mountain again. We're not going to drive loss anymore. We're going to go towards Jesus Christ, and we're going to get stronger and stronger and better and better. Can you say amen? I think you want to clap. I'm going to let you. Go ahead. And, and personally, I, I don't know anyone who's ever broken a negative cycle, which is a vicious, painful circle going around and around. And, and you look at a guy that five years ago, uh, as we became empty nesters, I noticed uh, some of my own negative patterns coming up. 
I started seeing a counselor. And he goes, Pastor Jude, I thought you were a man of faith. Yeah, mama. I'm still seeing a counselor. And you said, why? Because I needed a faith partner. I needed someone to challenge me that wasn't in the church, that wasn't on my side, to say, this is where you're getting stuck. I want to get unstuck. I want to live in freedom. Can you say amen? Everyone say forgiveness. Freedom. 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 Say freedom. freedom. Forgiveness. And can I say, Jesus Christ did not just die to forgive you and me. He died to forgive us, but also to give us freedom in him. Can you say amen? Now, we're, this is where we're going to end this message. Say, break it, replace it. Say, break it, replace it. Uh, I believe that the first thing that we need to begin to replace when we break a negative cycle, and look, I, I'm a, I was a youth pastor for 25 years, young adult. We have one of the largest conferences on the whole West Coast, our GC conference. You know how many times I've seen people come to an altar? You know, it's like, come to the altar, free Willie one. Come to the altar next year, free Willie two. Come to the altar five years in a row, free Willie five. It's like, my gosh, this is like a, you know, the same movie over and over. It's like, I don't want to just be forgiven. I want to be free. Everyone say, I want freedom. And this is how you get freedom. Number one, the power of being full, okay? And I want you to go to this scripture. It's Matthew chapter, uh, and it's the power of just being filled. It's Matthew 12, 44. Now, this is a demon speaking. And it's talking about a human being. Believe it or not, some human beings have evil power on and We call it like negative energy, bad karma. It may be a demon. And, and it says this, when the demon says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he, the devil, the demon, the bad karma, the negative energy comes and finds it, everyone say empty, swept, put in order. Let's do it again. Can you do it backwards? Oh, my God. You must work for Microsoft. You are smart. <laughs> Amen. Now, listen to this. This is pretty good. It says empty. Today, some of us need to empty things in our life. It could be negative emotions, unforgiveness, bitterness. So that's not a bad thing. Swept in order. Some people, it's like spring cleaning. The Spirit of God comes and says, hey, take this out of your life. But the other one is, says in order. But it says, but if it's empty... He will come back and move in with seven of his cousin. These demons must be from Louisiana or something, <laughs> you know, or, or Russian. You know how it is. Every Russian's kin to someone, you know. And, and so he's bringing in seven bad boys of his cousin. Why? Because he was not filled. Our goal is not just to empty. Our goal is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Our goal isn't just trying to break our addiction. Our goal is to make the Holy Spirit our addiction. Then he will break our addiction. Our goal is not just practicing a negative pattern. We, our goal is to practice the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when he fills us, if we're full, then there is no room in our house for any uh, negative energy or bad karma or anything else. It's being full of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? amen? Thank you, honey. She said so good. Can you give my wife a hand clap? Another one. How about this? The power of a renewed mind. If we're, we're not only going to break it, I want to replace it. Well, the way I replace it, I have to be full. But another one, I have to have a new mind. Renewed mind means you take the old mind, the weird mind, the stinky thinking mind, and you begin to renew it with some new thoughts, okay? And what does Romans 12, 2 say? It says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed. Con means, okay, if you're Spanish, con queso, that just means with. Don't be conformed with the people you're hanging out with, but be transformed. That means you transcend the, it's a higher power forming you. How? By the renewing of your mind. Now, let me tell you what some people say. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. They sound like they're from Arkansas. I'm just a sinner. No, you're not. Stop it. Be quiet. 
You will never hear in the letters of the New Testament that Paul wrote to the sinners in Rome, to the sinners in Colossae, to the sinners in Galatia, to the sinners in Thessalonica, to the sinners in Philippi. No, you know what he says? To the saints, to the saints, to the saints. Saint is not about me. It is about how God views me, handles me, and treats me. I am no longer a sinner. And somebody say, well, you act like one. Yo, mama, I am a saint in Jesus' name. Come on. I'm a saint. And you know what? You have to replace it. You can't say, no, I'm always going to be this way. I'm always going to be this way. No, you're not. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that whoever is in Jesus Christ, the old is gone and the new has come. Come on. The Bible says, forget the things of yesterday and press on to the mark and the upward call of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I'm a child of God. Come on. My gosh, people. Don't make me come off this platform and preach to you people in this cinema right now. Can you say amen? Okay, another one is this, and I really do believe this. We need the power of a faith confession. A power of a faith confession. And you say, what is that? I'm a new person in Jesus Christ. I am the head and not the tail. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, I'm not against 12-step programs. I think they help so many people. I'm for it, but for me... I don't want to get up if I'm a part of AA, Anger Anonymous. You know, hi, I'm Jude. I'm angry. You know, I, I don't want to do that. I want to say, hi, I'm Jude, and I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to really write this down. Right believing determines right living. Change the way you believe, and you will change the way you live. Any area of my life that's off, my thinking's off. I don't want to think religious. I don't want to think Louisiana. I don't want to think Russian. I want to think like the Bible tells me to think, and I want to begin to say what the Bible says about me. Now, I don't know if any of you have words that someone has spoken something negative to you. Maybe someone said, you're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You're always this. And you always say, their words said that. Stop it. There's one higher than any word of any human being, and that is the word of God. And heaven and earth will pass away. Nordstrom's will pass away. One day Bellevue will pass away. But this word will stand and abide forever. And if it says I'm a new man, then I'm a new man. If it says I'm going from glory to glory, I'm going from glory to glory. And in heaven, there are no circles. Heaven, we're going to go literally on a highway of success, destiny, and power. Can you say amen? amen. Man, I love this church. You say, what's the name of this church? City Hill. Come on. Everyone say, I am am. a new person. Now, I'm going to invite the band to come up. David, I want you to say, can you do that song, Holy, again? You know, it's like karaoke at a Chinese restaurant in Bellevue somewhere. I want you to do the Holy song. But I want you to say this. Say, replace it. Say, break it. Replace it. Now, I want you to put the last scripture up. Not only do we replace it with the power of being full, the power of a renewed mind, the power of a faith confession. I want you to put this last one down, and I'm going to read the scripture, Luke 4, 18, the power of a 21-day fresh start. I've always heard if you could do something for 21 days, you will change your life. And I want you to look at me. I'm going to become very vulnerable with you. Becky and I have been married for over 32 and a half years. And we have some cycles in our communication, in our relationship, that we're stuck. And we're in a circle. And we try to break it. And I don't think it's that either one of us intend to live in a circle. It just kind of happens that way. When you're newly married or you're single, sometimes you have either a fantasy or this idealistic view of what that relationship, the greatest relationship, that once-in-a-lifetime love is going to be. And you get in that cul-de-sac and you just keep going and going and your kids grow up and they move out and you become an empty nester. And it's like, God, I, I want to break this cycle. And I really, what I have been thinking, if I could literally for 21 days have a fresh start and have the power of uh, literally being filled, the power of a renewed mind, the power of a faith confession, and use just a faith partner to say, you know, two, give me one more. And then if I could do 21 days, I could change the next 21 years of my life. And I believe, can you believe how Bellevue's changed in the last 20-something years? And as it's changed, 
They're not even going to recognize us 20 years from now. And they're going to say, what has happened to you? It seems like every time I see you, you get better and better. I'm just going from glory to glory. I broke a negative cycle in my life with the help of God. And this is what Luke 4.18 says. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has graced me. He has anointed me. What? To preach the gospel to those who go to the ATM of life and they have insufficient funds. They have no power to break the, the, the negative cycle. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. Is your heart broken? I met people in the ministry. I mean, as a minister, as a pastor, you meet people whose heart has been broken. It's worse than Humpty Dumpty who sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. The heart is broken. Maybe it's death, divorce, betrayal, immorality. So many things crush and break the human heart. And they live in heartbreak hotel. But today, the Spirit of the Lord is here. And He's going to give us a new place to live. And He's going to give us a new swag and a new rhythm and a new dance and a new walk. And it goes on to proclaim liberty. Come on, I want freedom. What is a captive? We keep walking around. And I'm not doing that anymore. And if you can only hear me, when I was 20, I, I, for whatever reason, I thought it was okay to walk in a circle. 30, I still like walking in a circle. You become 59 and you're one year from 60. It's like, God, I don't want to go to the grave walking in this same circle. And if you are young, if you are mature, I say today is the day we break, break this negative cycle. Amen. And it goes on to proclaim liberty to the captive. We could put that right back up. Liberty to the captive. Healing to those who need healing. Recovery of sight. You're going to get your vision. And liberty to those who are oppressed. You're heavy. Your heart's down. If you say, I want to break a negative cycle, I want you to just raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand all over. It's okay. I'm raising my hand. I'm answering my own altar call today. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet right now. And before David starts leading this, I want to do this just a little bit softer. If you're standing, that means you want to break a negative cycle. When you get in your mind, what is that destructive pattern? What is it? Is it hurt? Is it something someone did to you? Maybe it's an eating disorder. Maybe it's abuse, pain. I don't care what it is. Maybe for a young person, it could be thoughts that are not morally right. And you said, I want to break this pattern. Seven years ago, I led the number 10 porn producer in the world to Jesus Christ. After I led him to Jesus Christ, he could not get those pornographic images out of his head. We went and prayed one afternoon, and I told him about the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. Three days later, he woke up. Every one of those negative images were gone. It's been three and a half years. He has not deleted history on his iPhone. That pattern was broken. I have an anointing today. You have an anointing today. I want to break something off of your life and my life and our life. If you want that thing broken, I want you to lift at least one hand in the air. Just lift it. I'm lifting my hand. Now, Father, I come now. You said your spirit is upon me. And God, if your spirit is upon us, O oh Lord, you said you have anointed us to break. And right now I come and I break and I pull down and I uproot. God, maybe things from childhood, maybe things from upbringing, maybe things from culture, oh Lord. God, we're not here just to play another Sunday church and kind of live the same old way when we leave this cinema today. But God, we come and we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that by your spirit and by your name, I break it in Jesus' name. God, we're now going to begin to move forward. God, we will be filled with your spirit. We will have a new concept and a new mind and a new perspective. God, we're going to begin to say what you say about who we are. And Father, we thank you. The next 21 days is going to be a miracle time in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let's worship and then we'll come back and close this. Right now, unbelievable. God has taken my deep unholiness and he's replacing it with his beautiful holiness. He says, I am holy, you be holy, but now I'm going to make you holy from the inside out. We now are broken and we've been replaced by the divine beauty nature of Jesus Christ.